Now, there's nothing that I enjoy more than coming in my wood shop and creating new, unique projects that grab attention, satisfy me creatively, and make money. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to use your CNC of choice to create this beautiful jewelry box, and I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process. Not only that, I'm going to tell you exactly what feeds and speeds I would use, and if you stick around to the end, I'm going to talk about how long it takes and how much I would sell this for. All right, to begin with, we need to prep our wood. I'm gonna use a piece of walnut. This is approximately seven and a half inches wide and 21 inches long. Now you can adjust it however you want to, but for the size that I'm creating it, that's what I'll need. From there, I'll use this master segue and move right over to my planer. I like to keep my miter saw and my planer uh, in the same part of the shop because I do go from one place to another very often already a flat board. I'm just going to trim it down and get it slightly under one inch. I'm going to cut it at about 0.96 inches thick. And the planer is also going to clean it up a little bit. Now let's move to the CNC. We are going to use a three quarter inch bowl bit. I'm going to run it at 16,000 RPM per minute. Spindle speed, a one eighth of an inch depth per pass, a 0.2 inch step over, and 42 inches per minute. I found that with this particular project, that speed actually works really well. Now, my CNC of choice is the Onefinity Woodworker X50. I've actually already ordered the upgraded model and it should be arriving here within the next couple of weeks, I hope. And for my choice of spindles, this is a Pwn CNC spindle system with a variable frequency drive and I love it. I made this upgrade a few months ago and if you're interested in any more information about the spindle or the CNC, I'll put links to reviews down in the description. Now you can design your own jewelry box using VCarve Pro, Fusion 360, Easel, any type of software like that. But if you're the type that would just like to download it and have it, I will put a link to the design files down in the description below. Now normally I would have my dust collection on there, but the first time running this project, I wanted to make sure I could keep an eye on it. And with that dust shroud on there, it's hard to see what's actually going on. So uh, as you'll see, this generates a lot of chips. Once we're finished here, I'll move on to the quarter inch end mill. Now, all you need to do right here is probe your Z axis because the X and Y should still be consistent. Now this is a one quarter inch end mill. I'm using 18,000 RPM spindle speed, uh, one eighth of an inch depth per pass, one eighth of an inch step over, and I'm running it at 60 inches per minute. From there, we'll just let that cut out. It's not a sexy process, so I'll just jump right past that and you'll see the finished process. Now, the last thing you always wanna do is cut out your profile. That limits the possibility that the work can actually shift and move on your spoil board. Next, we move to a dry fit to see how everything fits together. Um, the holes are a little bit too small for the dowel. I'm using a one half inch dowel and those dowels are notoriously not exactly one half inch. Not a big deal. I'll just simply use a little paste wax. And when the paste wax doesn't give me the result that I want, then I'll just move over to my sander and I'll sand off a little bit of the thickness of this dowel. And that does the trick, makes it much easier. Now in the future, I might make those pockets a little bit bigger so that I don't have to do this step, but it's not a big deal. Then let's move over to a final sanding. I'm gonna sand it at 120 and then again at 220. Now I like to sand these pieces uh, stacked together. That way you can make sure that any kind of imperfections, if you press too much, are at least gonna be consistent. But take your time with it and you'll get a nice contour and a gorgeous finish. From there, I'm just using mineral oil to uh, finish this. I love the look of mineral oil on a walnut. It really brings out that color. Next step is just to let it dry. And from there, let's move on to final assembly. Now, you wanna glue the dowel into the bottom piece, but you really want the other three pieces not to be glued so that each section can spin freely. Now, other options could be to engrave the top, to put some type of design on the top with a laser engraver or your CNC. You can also put felt or fabric inside each of those pockets. And obviously, you can use any type of wood you like. 
Now, one change that I did make, I didn't pay attention. And it turns out that the bottom side is actually actually looks a little bit better than the top. The top's got some imperfections. So I flip it over, but in order to get it to work, I've got to drill all the way through. Not a big deal. I'll pay better attention next time, but actually having that dowel sticking out on the end it is a neat little accent. And from there, we have a gorgeous little jewelry box. Now, how much would I sell this project for? This project takes approximately 45 minutes on the CNC. And then once it comes off, all it requires is a little bit of sanding and finishing with some mineral oil. In terms of materials, it takes just over one board foot of wood. So depending on the type of wood that you use, you're talking anywhere between five and $10 worth of material. I think you can easily sell this for 50 to $60, possibly more in your area. And in addition, at no added cost, I would include personal engraving. Those engravings always do a great job on sealing the deal. They make the project more personal to the buyer and it doesn't take long at all. Hey, with that, thanks for sticking around to the end. And if you'd like to see more great CNC projects, check out this video right here. This is my most profitable project ever and you can learn how to make it on your own. So click right there.